everybody. Thank you once again for tuning in to another episode of Road to the Top. I truly appreciate that you take the time out of your day and you listen to what my guests and even me might have to say to you. You make me happy and it warms my heart. Thank you very, very much. Uh, but before I get into the interview, I have to answer a question that uh, a lady by the name of Jackie, uh, she's emailed me twice now, so I think I better take care of business and answer it. She wanted to know why did I name my show Road to the Top? Uh, she had other suggestions, but uh, I like Road to the Top. And my answer to you, Jackie, is... Uh, I, I went back to the beginning of thinking when I was a martial artist and just a white belt and learning about what I could do if I uh, continued on the path of martial arts. And um, my road to the top was not easy to become number one and to become uh, able to compete in men's division, uh, to have opened up businesses in Europe when I couldn't even speak the language, I just relied on my ability. All that was a struggle, a struggle. Martial arts was not an easy world, but I'm, I'm strong and I wanted it bad enough that I never quit. So Jackie, I thought by doing interviews with a lot of people that have already reached their road to the top and maybe they're at that top and now going over and going to do something else, that it would inspire people who, who don't feel they can make it, who want to quit. It doesn't matter if it's in martial arts, if it's in fitness, if it's in losing weight, if it's in your personal relationship, you have to work at it, you have to try, you have to have faith that it's going to work. So Jackie, that's why it's called Road to the Top, because it's a climb and it's a hard climb. So I hope I answered your question, Jackie. All right, thanks for caring. Okay, everybody. Now, we're going to get into the exciting part of my show. You know, I really didn't even have to give my uh, next guest name at all. All I have to say is dark glasses, <laughs> black leather coat. Now, hmm, who might that be? If you said Art Camacho, you are 100% correct. My guest for today is Art Camacho. Hi, Art. Hey, you. How you doing? Thank Maria? you so much. I'm doing great, Art. I thank you so very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to let me have the honor and privilege to interview oh. you. Oh, I am so blessed and so honored. Really, really. Thank you. Thank you for even... Thank oh, you. well, you know, it's really... Uh, I was chuckling to myself because I was thinking, I don't think we've ever had a conversation that lasted longer than five minutes of that because we always meet up at events and so I was laughing and today I said ha ha he can't run away nobody can take him from me he's mine for as long as I can keep him so <laughs> that's cool we get actually um, we get to have a conversation with the world listening in <laughs> I love it yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, tell me, what have you been doing? I mean, you know, life is different now. So what have you been doing to entertain yourself? You know, you know, every day, every day, you know, and I, I was thinking about what you, what you answered about the, the uh, road to the top. And, and honestly, every day, every day, it's, it's a new, it's a new journey. It's a new struggle. It's a new adventure. Um, right now, um, we're developing, I'm going to actually be working on some more projects, but you know, in the last few years, just been re-examining what my journey is now. Because like you said, you, you reach certain certain guideposts or whatever goals, and then you, you know, you have to keep, what's the next goal? What's the next goal? And, um, and just lately, you know, trying to kind of refocus myself because the, you know, after we're all going through a lot or went through a lot through this whole pandemic lockdown. And, and so the adapting, adapting is, has been challenging, but good in a lot of ways. Right. Yeah. You know, during this um, pandemic, I've learned a lot about myself because I have so much time. I mean, like doing this show, you know, I was getting so bored with nothing to do with fitness and eat. I said, I got to do something to to motivate me. So I thought, how fun. I'll do a show. It's a challenge. I know nothing about it. And it's been great fun. So it's a new path for me. But I yeah, I, you know, you work so hard and you work so long and you're your whole life reminds me of my sons, Mark and Craig. 
they have goals and they keep, they don't want to stop until they reach their goals. And so they work, 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 work. But as I say to them, I'll say to you, do you ever take time to relax? Do you have hobbies? Do you uh, sports? What do you do for relaxation? You know what I do? I watch a lot of TV. I really mm -hmm. do because it's both enjoyable. And um, it, it, the funny thing is I'm, a, I'm an insomniac. I really, I really need some kind of a stimulus 24 mm -hmm. seven, because mm -hmm. if not my mind, I can't sleep. So I always sleep with the, the, the timer two, three hours. I'm watching these old TV shows just to, to, to close that, that part of, you know, that little uh, gerbil on the, <laughs> on the treadmill thing. Yeah. Going I can really yeah. understand that because a lot of people ask me, Malia, what are you doing? And of course me, I'm a Hallmark fan. I love yeah, romance and that. And so I'll say, I'm watching movie because for that, however many hours I'm in front of the television, I escape from everything yes. and I'm just yes. focused. Yes. yes. I'm focused. Yes. Yes. And you know, I think of these people in make-believe world, the writers can write happy endings. Why can't us real life people write happy endings for our own life? And so uh, I, I believe that. And so I get caught up in movies. Uh, I love movies. And like you, I find it very relaxing. Well, I, do you have any sports that you participate in other than the martial arts? You know, no, I just, I just, you know, I, I, I every day, uh, at least, yeah, well, you know what, every, almost every day, six, six days a week, I'm either on a treadmill, on, on the bicycle, or doing weights, and, and obviously martial arts, and and that that's also a release for me. You know, I need it more for here than I do for my body, because Absolutely. it helps me get the Yeah, I understand that. That's why it's good to do forms, because forms make you mentally use your brain. You have to memorize the movements. Sometimes I feel, oh my God, I think I'm getting old. I'm forgetting. So I go make myself do forms where I'm not using my body, but I'm having to use my mind, my brain. So forms for me are a really good way to keep me sharp and in tune. Although you can ask my students, they'll say, oh my gosh, you know, because I put my own style together. She and I Kung Fu. So when you put your style together, it's your privilege to change it and make it better, <laughs> do whatever you want. So I've done that so many times. They think, oh, she's forgetting everything. No, I'm making it better. But uh, I, I didn't know. I I'm sorry. You are amazing. I'm, I'm being honest with you. You are one of my idols. You are oh, so how sweet of you. You're mine too. I've always found you fascinating and I loved it because I always thought you were not, uh, uh, that you're a leader and not a follower because you're not a groupie. You're not hanging around people. I observe people when I go to events and I see who, I can kind of figure out who needs this, who needs that. And you've always just been a man alone. You should do a movie by the name of Man Alone. Man because, alone. Yeah, Man Alone. You know who you are, where you're going and what you're doing. And it shows in the way that you present yourself when you're out in public. And I love it. And, and you know what? I And and, and you're, and, and honestly, even, even though we've only been a few minutes, you are so natural at this. Uh, and, and I say that because I uh, I was hired uh, by El Rey Network this year and I and I did a, I did an actual talk show. And that was the hardest thing in the world for me, Malia. The hardest, hardest thing. You are so natural. I, I couldn't wait to finish. <laughs> oh, well, you know, um, I think um, as you, you, we had different paths. I was a teacher um, for years at the head of the class, giving directions, giving orders, uh, telling people what to do. And the way Al taught me, he never taught me to be uh, A, B, C, D. He said, hey, there's the material, learn how to flow with it. So I learned flow flow with words, flow with movement, flow with whatever. So to get in, I've always said, to get in front of a, a camera doesn't frighten me as long as it, somebody tells me to talk. You could tell me to talk about anything. I'm got verbal diarrhea here. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, uh, I, I didn't know, and shame on me, um, that you studied with Eric Lee. Yeah, yeah, he's he's my seat. No, Eric Lee. Um, I consider him my mentor, my sifu, everything. I mean, without Eric Lee, there is no Art Camacho. Even though I've trained a lot of you know all around, you know, in, in different systems with different people, uh, sifu is just my you know. I tell you, he's my 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 core because I think in, in martial arts, my at least my approach to martial arts is that obviously everyone 
um, cross trends. You know, we're doing different things, but I think you have to have a foundation. And then C4 Eric Lee, my one up window is the, the foundation. And from there, everything stems out, I think. And well, how did you how did you even meet up with Eric? Were you <laughs> looking for uh, an art to train in or was it just how did you end up with Eric Lee? You know, what happened was uh, as a little kid, I was uh, and unfortunately, you didn't get the book. I wish I uh, she should get the book. I don't know why it hasn't gotten the mail so slow. But as a kid, I was such a and still still I struggle with self-esteem issues, but bullied, fat just the worst i mean i hated sports my my favorite sport was eating twinkies and ho-hos you know <laughs> <laughs> that's a good sport i like that <laughs> and, and at 13 uh, my father put me in japanese karate and three months later it, because the instructor was a friend of his he told him he said you know what you know i love you but you know he's, he's really not cut out for this he's not and i wasn't i really didn't have my heart then i tried taekwondo same thing i stuck with it a little while and, and it wasn't until, until because I was a big Bruce Lee freak. I mean, Bruce Lee to me is the ultimate. And uh, and there was a thing called this uh, Bruce Lee uh, Museum in Hollywood. And Eric Lee was giving a seminar. I read about it because I used to follow him in Black Belt Seam on the cover of magazines. And when I saw, wow, a chance to, to meet. I, I didn't care shit about training at the time. I said, I want to just right. meet the guy. I met him. I went through his training and it just, it just clicked. It clicked. Yeah, this was way back in the... Uh, uh, late 80s late 80s i think and you know that's kind of, that's kind of a point i make to people and i've said it many times a lot of people start in a given art maybe mm -hmm. they went to the neighborhood uh, strip mall and said you know self defense course and maybe it was hard style karate i didn't mm -hmm. like it so they just give up i always tell people it's like shopping for clothes or food or shoes you need to shop around before you make that final decision uh, in martial arts and what you just said is a perfect exam a perfect example when i tell people shop around don't give up on the art you happen to find what was perfect for you cool yeah. too. and that's the thing you find you find the art you find the not only the art but you find the, the, the person uh, to me it, it was the person of eric lee because he's a, a phenomenal human being and 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 apart from his obviously martial arts mastery, but but you're right. It it, it has to be something that that fits you. Yeah. And, and, and you also have to be in the right mindset. I was not when I was started. I was not in the right mindset. I didn't want yeah. to do it. I I yeah. wasn't athletic at all. And then 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 uh, Eric Lee came along, and uh, then you know that that affected my life dramatically. What know? a perfect person to start with. He's so easygoing and. It's such a pleasure to be around and his outlook on life is so yeah. amazing. Just, the he, only thing about him, he tells terrible jokes. That's the only how, thing. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm always telling him. He, he, when we roasted Al DeCascos, he and I hosted that event and he he said, oh, I'm going to do it with you. I said, oh, Eric, please don't tell me. Are you going to tell jokes? <laughs> no, no. Throw a kick. Do a comment. No jokes, no jokes. But no, I, I have nothing but admiration for, for uh, that man. He's, he's absolutely amazing. Did you ever get to train with Al? You know, I, I, I was just one seminar and just because Al was amazing. I mean, I just, I, I, again, you and him are, are just amazing amazing martial artists and human beings and uh but you know but no no i, I wish i would have had a chance but i've always been out here in the, the uh, west you know the south no, yeah but no, uh, I, just i think uh, al for me was probably uh the best the best in uh of course other than bruce lee but when you look at him from the past and you look at the students he's turned out, I mean, and you look at him today, you know, he's still at his age, movement yeah. and good. Nothing bad to say about him either, well, even though he was my ex-husband, I should say something really terrible. <laughs> but I can't. But but you know what? That's that's what that's what I really admire about you, about Al, about Sifu, is that that look at how long you've been doing the martial arts and yet you you live it you 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 embody it so it's not mm -hmm. like you're you know like i see a lot of these guys and no disrespect to anybody intended but that's why to me fitness is such a part of life because i have to go out there i'm art kamacha i'm this fighter I, I can't be this with this big gut out here and then you know and and you guys are in amazing shape and still crisp and everything it's just phenomenal to yeah. see 
We try. We both, uh, I'm trying to do my part for my health. You know, the good Lord gave me the opportunity to, to still have my mind, my body, be able to move and walk. And, you know, you get so sad. You see so many people that are not able to do that. And I think shame on me if I don't get up off my butt and go out there and do something. And so, yes, uh, I'm blessed with my life. And I have to believe that the good Lord has blessed you as well. Yeah, so Malia, it's a choice, I think. But not, no. I, I think 90% of it's a choice. 10% is, is what, you're, the, what you're dealt with in a life. But I think a good 90% is what you choose to do with your life. I mean, mm -hmm. I choose every morning. I told you, that's why even uh, I have my, I have a little workout place in the garage. I have a room specifically with my cardio. And even if it's just an hour, 40 minutes, just watching TV as I do bikes. Exactly. Exactly. You know, you, know, you don't. Uh, I was reading an article the other day. Everybody always say you have to walk 10,000 steps a day. And mm -hmm. I didn't know 10,000 steps a day was an ad, ad, advertisement in Japan for a stepper thing. And they made a quote, 10,000 steps a day for your health. And that was how the uh, definition of 10,000 steps a day you need to take. But in reality, when I read more about it, it said we're good with four and five thousand steps a day. So yeah, that ten thousand steps a day is <coughs> element. Okay, Art. Well, um, you know your book. I'm so sad to say it just arrived. Look at this amazing book, oh, Art Camacho. That's the man right there. See, it looks just like him sitting in that chair. <laughs> I love it. But uh, this book, I, I, I. This is exactly what I was able to do. Oh, I didn't get to read all about Art Camacho, but that doesn't matter. Uh, uh, as we go through the interview, I'm going to come to sections of this book. Yes. Now, I, uh, to all of you looking, I have not been able to read the book, but I can tell you it's real worth uh, uh, spending money on it and buy it. This is an amazing book about an amazing man. And in our interview today, he can't get into everything, but this book will certainly give you an insight who Art Camacho is. So please you know, buy this book. All right, Camacho, it's called A Filmmaker's Journey. Right. Awesome. Okay. All right. So getting into your interview, mm -hmm. um, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to go backwards a little bit in your life uh, because, you know, everybody has a beginning in order to be successful. Uh, mm -hmm. There had to be some pretty hard knocks along the way to make you be able to come out who you are today. And, uh, in my eyes, you just simply are a well-rounded man. But now you uh, you grew up in East LA, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it was a little uh, area in East LA. It, you know, it, it, growing up there, and, and, and I want to want to get into that just a little bit because I right now, like you said, going backwards. Sometimes when I'm working or whatever it is, I still can't believe what I'm doing. I'm this fat little kid from, from, from the barrio with high school dropout with no education, no nothing, just, and, and, and to be doing movies is such an amazing thing. It's, it's, it, it's crazy. It's crazy, Molly. I can't, I can't believe how blessed, how blessed it is. It know? must, it, it must've been God's chosen path for you, or it wouldn't have happened. Yeah. Because, um, you didn't go to school to learn about this. You, uh, like you say, you didn't graduate high school. No, no. you didn't. Uh, and, and it's hard for me to believe I read where you said you were a fat little kid. I can't believe you were ever to be fat. <laughs> I'm telling you, you know, I was topping at, at, at I think 13, I'm like five, three, five, four, over 200 pounds. I used to 36 inch waist. And ah! <laughs> How tall, how, how tall are you? I'm 5'9". But That's I mean, right. I, was, I was a fat little, a little watermelon. But happy because I didn't care about training. It was just eat and eat and drink sodas, grape sodas, your ho-hos, your Twinkies. Those are pretty good snacks. I like ho-hos and Twinkies. <laughs> I, I'm still guilty of eating junk food on occasion. I never will give it up. 
<laughs> Somehow or another, junk food satisfies my soul. <laughs> yes, 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 I agree. I yes, agree. If, if, you know, I would rather have a piece of pumpkin pie over a green salad. The pie <laughs> made me feel good. The salad, uh, but anyhow, so I do understand that. But, you know, that in itself is a good message for young children today because, you know, there's so many fat kids in our country that uh, parents don't seem to uh, take notice and help them out. Uh, right. For a little, I'm sure maybe parents might be watching this and they might ask their children, tune in and see what Art Camacho did. He was also at one time a fat little kid and look where he's at today. That could be an incentive for a little person that, uh, so... That's why I have that thing, you know, I, I took, I stole the motto from a, from a, for an actor friend of mine, live the dream, because mm -hmm. to me, it took me a long time to, to internalize that, but my God, why not? Why not? Yes. Live the dream? Why not give it a shot? I know, but if you hadn't had a dream, where mm -hmm. would you be? Yeah, but, but the thing is, we, you know, that's, you're right, because we, I think we all have the dreams, but we deprive ourselves because wait, I could never do that. I could oh, never no. do that, you know? We could do anything we want to do. <laughs> you know, nobody, uh, that's just something I've always lived by. Don't tell me I can't do it because if you tell me I can't do it, I'm for sure going to do it. And right, I, you're, but you're in the minority, Malia. You're in the minority. Most of us, we have so much negativity. Even when I was starting, Malia, when I started as a kid looking at movies and stuff and I wanted, I said, you know, that would be really cool to be in movies, to be part of it. And everyone around me, my family, everybody was quashing it. Actually, my, my uncle, who I love to death, sat me down one day because I, I asked him, I said, I think I was 15, 16. I said, hey, uncle, you know what? I would really, I don't know, something inside of me, I would really love to, to be in movies. And, and he sat me down and he said, you know, mijo, mijo is a very term of endearment. He said, mijo, let me tell you this. And I'm going to paraphrase. You're 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 fat. You're ugly. You have no personality. I would have popped him in the mouth. <laughs> I believed him. I he 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 was right. I'm kind of fat. I'm kind of ugly. Well, I got no personality. <laughs> How old were you when he told you 15. that? I was 15. Well, you were old enough to know better. No, I wasn't. You no, didn't know better. I wasn't. I, you I, were 15 I, going on 10. Yes, he was. I'm being honest with you. That's what I'm saying. You're in the minority because he was right at that point. Oh, man. Years, he was right. And oh, I, I hope you embraced and hugged and kissed this man for giving <laughs> you that uh, bit of information to help you along your path. Yeah. So yeah. was that when you took a turn in life and you... Nope. No, you know what, what took a turn in life was was a couple of things. It was like the perfect storm. I mean, number one, I, I couldn't get girlfriends. I, I was that's important, but you know, eh, life is life. And then I got beat up. Then I oh. got gangbangers, about five of them, just one night, stupid me, wrong place at the wrong time, beat the living daylights out of me. Oh and my I, goodness. It was a beat me to a pulp. I, the, the only thing I remember is throwing one kick and seeing an opening and running and running running the one thing you would never i never forget is the uh the the, the how warm blood feels pouring down your face because Ooh. it feels and it smells a certain way you know you feel this warmness and that's all i remember and, and it took me like three weeks Molly. I, I did not want to leave the house i was so afraid oh so afraid to leave the house and oh my then, gosh it started to build up, Malia. I had one of two choices, either get paralyzed by the fear or, or get engulfed by the anger. And I was engulfed by the anger. And that's what led me to eventually do martial arts because I had a lot of fire inside of me. And, and part of it was I really, part of it, to be honest with you, I wanted just to beat the crap out of these guys. I said, I'm going to learn martial arts. I want to beat the crap out of these guys. And that was my singular goal. Ah. And, it started turning then, then I told you, then the influence of Eric Lee, then so many things started happening. And, um, and then eventually, you know, it turned my whole life around. 
That's a beautiful story, you know? It's amazing that you were able to be turned around because sometimes at 15, you're a stubborn kid who <laughs> won't listen. You think you're the one with the answers and you don't take advice, you don't listen, you just keep going on that same track of ho-hos and Twinkies. Yes. But it was a good thing you got the crap beat out of you. It's true. And that's why, as a matter of fact, I, I was uh, talking to somebody yesterday and I said two things. If I ever ran into those guys, I one one I'd want to thank them. Two, I'd want to beat the shit out of them. Still, I'll beat the crap out of them, but I want to thank them. Oh, for absolutely, them. yeah. <laughs> you know, but I, you know, I never hear you talk about uh, siblings. Do you have brothers or sisters? Yes, 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 yes. How many <laughs> brothers and sisters? Yes, Where are you? Yeah, are you I'm, the baby? I'm kind of in the middle. I have like, uh, you know what? And that's the thing. Unfortunately, I don't have a, 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 a strong relationship with my family. I haven't seen them in years. Oh, really? How many of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I tell you, you know- what Even your family? mama and papa? You don't uh, see mom? They both passed away. They okay. both passed away. All but right. my mother, I hadn't seen in, in many years. I mean, it was a very strange relationship because when they said, because they, there was a childhood divorce, <clears throat> they separated. And, um, and I had like two, I think six brothers and sisters and um, and not to put her down, she and again, I, I, I love them dearly, and they did the best with what they had at the time. But having said that, when they divorced, uh, my mother wanted to take all my brothers and sisters with her and leave me here with my father. So it's like, no, I was a mama's boy. I wanted to be with mom, but right. she didn't want to be with her. So that kind of plays with your mind, you know. And so you know, grow up, and then you know, you, you live your life. And I don't hold grudges, but. But that's why it was a little bit strained. And even, and it, but again, Amalia, I'm thankful because had I gone that route with her and the whole family, I wouldn't be sitting here. I wouldn't be doing films. Oh, yeah. Like I say, I, I always believe my destiny and everybody's destiny is written. It, yeah. it is as it's meant to be. And that's this true. was what your destiny was meant to be, too. Uh, to help others and, and to inspire. And I mean, it's an unheard of story. I was going to ask you, were you popular in school? Well, you didn't go to school, so you weren't popular. And then I was going to ask you if you were a leader or a follower in school. Well, you yes. weren't neither. <laughs> I was in my corner eating my whole hose in my <laughs> But you know what? When I tell you these things, and that's what I, I don't want ever, anybody to ever <laughs> walk away thinking, oh, poor Art, look at he got beat up, his, his, his mother abandoned him. No, no, no. I'm, I'm so grateful to all those experiences because that is what led me to where I am right now. That's why I have friends that I grew up with and I used to admire them. They were good looking, very just, my God, you see them and they're, oh my God, Rico Suave is like, I want to be like that guy. I see them now because they took it for granted. I can't. I have to. Oh, yeah. And now you see them now. It's like, yeah. Balding, big guts. It's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I see that all the time. And that's so disappointing for me. You know, I'm a very outspoken woman. And I, I, I never talk behind anybody's back. I say it directly to their face. Uh, I don't, if I can't back up what I'm saying, don't say it. But normally, because I'm so involved in health and fitness, and yes. when I, I'm 78 years old. Oh, my God. Look at you. I, no, no. Wow. I'm oh, there I am. I'm 78. Yeah. I normally don't talk about my age because it's just a number. But right. uh, I've recently met so many people, and they say, well, how old are you, Malia? I said, and I say, take a guess. Oh, 50s. And oh, my yeah. gosh, thank you. I love you. But uh, when I tell them my age, they say, my God, you have to you have to come up front and spit it out because you your own walking advertisement. Yes. I practice what I preach. And, you That's know, it doesn't mean that uh, you or me, the good Lord could take us home like that. But if I'm going to be teaching fitness and telling people what to do my whole life, I better be an example. So that's always been. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. That's why I say you embody it. You don't talk it. You live it. You yes. are. It. Exactly. So, amazing. yeah, that's why when you say you're living your dream, uh, I just, I love that you're living your dream. I'm living uh, what I preach to everybody. Uh, you know, they do this, do that, do this. And, and nobody can come back to me and say, well, Malia, I don't see you doing that. I do know my students do come back to me and they catch me eating 
Baskin Robbins banana splits or things. <laughs> you already. Yeah, but, but what I do is I go, hmm, look, hmm, I don't have any fat. <laughs> so anyhow, but uh, yes, you know, I'm 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 just proud of you. And I wondered, other than being beat up in your young years, mm-hmm. who really uh, who prepared you for life? Anybody, or was it you? Who prepared you? When you open that door now and you, you're a 15 year old kid, you're tired of all that crap and you got beat up, you opened up another door. Who prepared you to open that door up and go forward? You know what? It's hard to say because I really was always a loner. I always, I always kept to myself. I'm very different than the rest of my family and not in a bad, I'm not, again, not putting anyone down. I'm just stating fact. And I think it was, I found solace in movies, in Bruce Lee's movies, in comic books, that was my world. Those were my those were my uh, role models. Were the comic books, the Supermans, the the Iron Mans, all those. That's where I think, <clears throat> you know, came a lot of because of a lot of the passion in me. And and all honesty, and again, no disrespect or no ill will towards anybody in my family, but I pretty much raised myself emotionally, mentally, because I was bullied in school. I, I, that's that's part of the reason I dropped out of school because I was every day I, I get get put on beat up and it was just horrible. It was horrible at that time. But again, so what? I mean, I'm not saying oh, feel sorry for me. No, 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 no. Hell no. I'm, I'm grateful because that led me to where I am now. There was no singular person that you could say or or family or whatever that you could say. Oh, this person. No, no. And, and they all contributed little bits because you grow your influence by people, but. My solace, my my role models were my comic books was Bruce Lee because and and Bruce Lee it was almost like fate that I was to be turned on to watching him because we we grew up in a my father at one time had a restaurant and so that was again another part of the whole thing where in the mornings before school you had to go there you clean up open the restaurant yeah or you can't do homework because you got to go wash yeah. the and so. Every day, every day was like that. And one day my father wanted to reward us and, and see these Kung Fu movies because I started to get into watching, you know, all these Kung Fu movies. And we rushed, we cleaned the restaurant quick, mopped, clean, rushed to the to the to the theater. They were showing the Chinese connection. That was the first film I ah, saw. Ah, the first movie. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, we get there, and again, here's here in that one night I experienced three major things. One the, the, there was a it was a, it was a white guy who was a, who was a, at the counter. We got there. I think the movie started like at nine. It was like nine ten or nine ten, and uh, and my father said, "Okay, I want three tickets for my uh, my son and, and his friend." And the guy said, "Well, the movie started. I can't let you in." And he goes, "Yeah, but they really want to see it, and because we really wanted to see, it. I wanted to see." It. Yes. <laughs> and, and the guy refused to. <laughs> And then finally, my father said, well, well you know, I can, I, I can pay you. What, what, what do you want? My, I want to take my kids to go see this movie. And so he basically was going to charge my father double. Double? Uh, double, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, in mean, today's money, it's, it's, I mean. Yes, double. yes. <laughs> but, but my father was going to pay it. So he said, this again, young white guy. So, so he, because he looked at us kind of down and, you know, you, you feel a tinge. Maybe it wasn't, maybe the guy was being a jerk or maybe he was being racist, whatever. So my father's putting out the money. An older white guy comes out. And I say, I say race because it means, it means something to the story. The older white guy was the manager. So he goes out there and he sees my father handing over all his cash. And he goes, What's, why, why so much money? There's only three of them. He goes, oh, well, you know, the movie started late and I'm going to charge them extra because they're, you know, they want to still see it. And he looked at him, he goes, no, 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 no. He got the cash. He gave it back to my father. He goes, sir. He goes, my father looked at him. He says, sir, it's okay. I will pay the money. It's not a matter. I just want my kids to go see this movie. And then the, the older white guy looks at him and he says, you know, sir, you don't have to pay nothing. You guys come in as my guests. So he gave all his money back. And I was like, wow. So I saw the good side and, and the bad and the good in one night. And then we go in there. It was only like four, three people, four people in the theater. That's how crazy the city was. Uh, you know, it wasn't like it was packed. <clears throat> I went in there. I sat, you know, my head, my old row to myself, centered, making sure I was in the center row. I think third row from the screen. And, and that night changed my life, watching Chinese Connection, seeing Bruce Lee on that screen. 
after that. I love that story. You know, uh, it's amazing how I recently interviewed uh, another person who had a, a very uh, abusive childhood and what uh, got them on the right road of life was not the family, but watching movies. Yeah. Uh, and the message from the movie and they would get lost in the movie and uh, start pretending like they were that person and it brought okay. them out. And uh, of course, today, that person is extremely successful, such as you. But yeah, uh, that's a good point. You know, that's why it's so important. Uh, uh, movies are important for people. Movies are uh, therapy. Uh, it, it helps. I totally believe that. And here's the thing, and here's where people get stuck a lot of times in martial arts. I noticed that in the beginning, you're, you're, you're you know, as a kid, you're, you're doing your Bruce Lee imitation, wah, and all this stuff. Yeah. But then, if you really internalize what he was about or what these idols are about, is you, you use that as an inspiration, but you become a great version of yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't become a cheap copy of Bruce Lee, you become a great version of Art Camacho or of Molly Exactly. Exactly. That's, that's exactly. <laughs> you know, you, 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 you went through so much, you know, and you never, you never, uh, you took, you opened up the new door, you saw a movie, you're going to change your life. Uh, still, you have to go home, still you meet people, still you have a lot of negativity around you. What, what motivated you to keep going in the direction you now have chosen? What motivated me is, again, failure after failure after failure because my whole life has been one one big failure but every now and then you get a little success and then then that makes it for all the other failures but what motivated me was having a dream seeing bruce lee every weekend we used to go to the swap meet and buy the newest bruce lee poster and the oh. newest, yeah so I used to, my room was all bruce lee and 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 i wanted to to you know that the feeling that that i got watching him in movies i said Gosh, I want, I want to do that. I want to do that. I don't know how. I don't know if I'll ever be able to. But it wasn't until I, I, I remember when I was 17, I got a job at a uh, at a Orange Julius because I dropped out of school. And then I said, OK, I'm going to go to a, a junior college, but I need some cash. So I uh, pay some mm -hmm. books. Got a part-time job. There was so much turmoil at this place at the time. They were firing people left and right because people were stealing all this stuff. So in two weeks, they made me like assistant manager. So, okay, by default, okay. Oh, you're climbing on up. <laughs> <laughs> Three months into that job, they hired me the manager. They oh. me. So I'm not even 18, I'm a managing an Orange Julius. Oh, boy. It's crazy, because again, they had fired two managers. So it's like, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> but but part of it is is also, again, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, you, I don't know if it's smart or lazy or a combination of both, but what I would do, is I would teach all my employees that I'd hire how to run the store so I didn't have to do all the work. That was smart. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so what happened is that, that I mean, everybody, so I'd go in there. My, my, my routine at like 2021 was unlock the gates, put the ca cash in the cash register, and then get a stack of comic books, go on the toilet, have everybody else do the work. <laughs> so I think well, you had to make sure the business made money. You can't yeah. be a manager and have a failing business. Absolutely. <laughs> but but the, the good and the bad was that that's where I had an epiphany. I swear to God, it's so funny because I was um, I was doing this. And after a few years, I, I literally was not doing anything anymore physically because it's like I had everybody doing all my job, right? So <laughs> I'm sitting on the toilet with my stack of comic books and it hit me. It's I'm washed up at 21. I thought, <laughs> I'm at the end of my life. <laughs> this is this is the obituary. Art Kamatsu hit the toilet and read comic books all his life. You know, Art, have you ever had the opportunity to tell Shannon and Lyndon uh, what an uh, effect and a turning point uh, Bruce Lee was to you? Yeah, many, many, many years ago. Many years ago. I, you know, and I'm sure they get, they get bored of it because they hear from everybody. But yeah, I. I such a such a blessing to 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 me, Linda. Actually, Bruce Lee's mother, Grace, taught me how to use chopsticks. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. It was such a strange, surrealistic experience for me as a kid. How did that happen? You know, I started. You know, I told you I went to a seminar with Eric Lee, right at the Bruce Lee Museum, 
And then I discovered that museum. That's the first time I'd ever heard of it. So I started volunteering there, just basically going on weekends and whatever, going over there and helping them sweep, mop, whatever. And so then, then eventually they took me under their wing and they, they did these uh, tributes to Bruce Lee. And so they, that's how I met Bruce Lee's wife and, 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 and his mother. And we went to New York because we did a big tribute in New York. So they flew me up there and here I am sitting with the Norman Boreen, who was the founder of the museum and Bruce Lee's mother on one side. I'm like, holy shit, man, this is so cool. Bruce Lee's mother. <laughs> wow. that, that is amazing. You know, a Chinese restaurant and I got a fork and she looked at me and she said something and she put those sticks in my hand and <laughs> there you go, man. I was like, how the hell do you eat like this? There's not many people that can say that. <laughs> I love that. You know, I you know, I look at you. Okay, first you were a fat little kid, then you got beat up, then at 15 you found Bruce Lee, you changed your life and you're going to uh, you became a uh, you went to work, uh, you became a manager, you you've done all these things, little things, little things improving yourself. Uh, uh, but that part of your life um you, uh, anybody who wants to give up in life, don't give up. When you think that there's a beginning, this was a beginning that he had a rough beginning. He lived on ho-hos and twinkies. <laughs> no, but he, uh, he changed his life. And uh, from what I understand, he was the sole person who changed his life other than people he met along the way. But he had a drive, he had a passion, he had a dream and he wasn't going to give up until he reached that dream, whatever point it was at his life. Now, when I look at the next chapter of Art's life, you know, I, I look at, okay, I'm looking, I'm reading this now. Uh, stunts, film director, actor, film producer, fight choreographer, uh, directed and produced commercials, amazing movie list. I, I can't even imagine. I, I'm most impressed. I have to ask you about that one is directing a period piece in Russia. Oh, yes. That has to have an amazing story. And then I read, did you, uh, El Rey Network, you had uh, your own show called The Camacho Experiment? Kind of something like this? Kind of something like this, but what I did, what happened, and here's, here's what I was telling you, is that um, it, it is hard. Number one, Malia, and, and I don't want anybody to think, uh, oh, Art Camacho just did this and things happened. No way, no way. It is hard, hard lot. My life has been very hard, but good. During the pandemic, things shut down. Everybody shut down for the first few months. And I get this call from El Rey. Because I've been, I've known them and they're good people. I've known them for a couple of years. And we were always trying to find a fit for me with the show, with doing with them, with the network. And he called me up and he says, hey, Art, you know what? We got an opportunity here. We're funding. We're starting to produce a few shows. We want to do kind of a, you know, a talk show with, with you. And I'm thinking, produce and direct. I said, great, no problem. We can do it. You know, and then uh, they go, no, no, we want you to host it. Really? Host <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. I can get you another, since it's Latin, I can get you another Latin. I can, I'll find Latin martial arts guys. And they go, no, 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 Art, you have, you have a little bit of a name. You have, you know, we really, and then I thought about it. And then I thought, you know what we're doing? Everybody's doing, you know, the podcast and they're all great. Absolutely. I mean, so then he says, well, how are you dealing with it? He says, because a lot of our show right now, the shows we're shooting, a lot of them are doing with Zoom. And I said, you know what? I don't know anything about Zoom, but I, I'm sure I can get a few people. We'll, we'll do, we'll do, we'll do, uh, We'll do, you know, we'll do, we'll do six shows, but um, I said, but can I do it Camacho style? He goes, well, what do you mean by that? I said, well, number one, I'm not a host. I've never done that in my life, but yeah. what I'd like to do is make it different. How different is, is, is have action in it, have fighting in it, show behind the scenes in it, and then have an actual physical martial arts lesson in it. Mm -hmm. And then instead of asking, you know, about people's careers, I want to ask what makes them tick? What the mm -hmm. hell? drove them what mm -hmm. was and they go we love it and so just so you know the way the, the shows are laid out Maria, i start off i say hey i'm mark camacho right when i'm going to introduce the show guys start trying to beat the shit out of me <laughs> so it's like I'm trying to, <laughs> boom 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 i'm trying to just talk to the camera these guys are hitting the guys guy. <laughs> and then we created a title sequence with, uh, I got this Grammy award-winning band, those Lonely Boys, they have a song called Rule the World, which is powerful. So 
I, I went to a rave. They said, we can't afford it. I said, guys, they're friends of mine. I'll work it out so we can't afford it. They go, Art, you know, their friends is one thing, business is something else. But, you know, I ended up pay, obviously paying for it, but not, not what they, uh, what they, what they right. expected. Not the song. Powerful, powerful song. Powerful song. Rule the world. It just speaks to you. It speaks Ooh. to your power. And then I used clips from a lot of my movies, cars exploding, fights in the title sequence. And then when we get to the uh, interviews, in between the interviews, I start showing clips behind the scenes of the making of the Camacho experiment. So you see cameras, you see some fighting, you see, you know, so I wanted to make it so different than just a regular sit down talk show because I said, I'm not a host, so I'll kind of fake my way through it, you know? And that's how that happened. They really, they loved it. Unfortunately, uh, they, they, uh, Ed Ray is no, no longer producing shows, but they had it on their splash page for months and they, 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 wow. they were popular shows. They were, it was one of their most popular shows because it was so different. And, yeah. uh, and I tell you, that Sounds to me cool. was like, wow. So it's not out there anymore? No, no longer? It, right now, actually, what we're doing right now, we're, uh, we're repacking it because what, what they do on these shows when they, uh, they buy the licensing rights for them and then after it expires then now i got the other uh, companies interested in showing the series okay so that's what we're going to do we're going to bring the series out again because it, it played all the way till um oh actually till this month till this month yeah generally. so i could watch it if i <laughs> tune in to la it's still there it's possible but uh but i don't know if they're still uh airing them because i know we oh, are okay in to the middle of the month Oh, but, so you've had a, a little taste of what it's like to sit in the chair and have to talk. I, I, I would not want to do that again. I tell you, I admire you. It's like, <laughs> you, you know. Well, you know, this was my fear. This was a challenge to me uh, to get up here and, you know, make a fool of myself. Maybe I had to take a chance. And I thought, well, Malia, you never lost for words. You can do this. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm proud that I've been able to uh, make it. Through. I was actually frightened to interview you. Uh oh, <laughs> I said, oh, no, you know, he's so he, he's so accomplished. And here I am just a little, no. to the top, you know, and I thought, ah, how can I do this? But um, anyhow, I'm doing it, and I'm happy, and it's going good, and yeah, all right. You are phenomenal. You are phenomenal. <laughs> I was nervous about coming on with you because you're so accomplished. I'm thinking, oh, my God, I'm what am I doing? No, oh, I'm just a plain old ordinary Rocky Road chocolate chip ice cream girl. <laughs> <laughs>